So wind speeds at 175 miles per hour, which is unbelievable. Gusts at 185. So a strong Category 5 hurricane as it approaches the Leeward Islands. That is an absolutely devastating and catastrophic hurricane for these islands. Uh, hurricane warnings have been issued, and hopefully their plans are in place because of Category 5. That is National Hurricane Center saying we're going to have a Category 5 for a maybe a day or two. So watching this, the northern Leeward Islands, you're in trouble right now, unfortunately. We are dealing with a very strong, potentially dangerous storm moving your way. Then we watch Puerto Rico, uh, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Cuba, and there's the center of the storm. But I, I don't want people to pay attention to the center because there is the potential five days out that this moves south of that center or north of that center. But certainly right now, Florida Keys, South Florida, making your preparations now. Very warm water ahead of the storm. That's why the potential is there for it to maintain its Category 5 status for the next 24 to 48 hours. There's the computer models. Very good agreement until Friday. And then we start to see the trough that will potentially influence the storm coming from the north. And then we think making a right-hand turn. But again, we got to watch this because anything can happen five days out. I know Florida, you're in the crosshairs here. Gulf of Mexico, though, you need to be prepared. East Coast also needs to be prepared. One thing is for certain, Julie, yeah. this is a very dangerous storm that could potentially be deadly. So we need to make our prep. This is a very powerful storm. This is the visible satellite image. And you can see as the sun comes out, look at this perfect Category 5 storm. 175 mile per hour sustained winds. At its peak, Katrina was 175. We haven't seen a storm of this strength in 10 years since Felix. Things prepare for the storm. Many areas in the Caribbean are getting ready for a direct hit. Here's a look at Irma from space. Emergency officials say the storm could bring up to 10 inches of rain and 23 foot waves. Tuesday, September 5th, big news coming at you from Irma. You may have already heard it has been upgraded to a major Category 5 hurricane. Sustained winds right now, 180 miles per hour with gusts up to 220. The forecast track has been slightly shifted off to the north and northeast here, staying over open, very warm waters of the Bahamas as it puts its sights on the southern part of Florida. That cone of uncertainty, obviously the model uh, margin of error does grow significantly up to five days out. So southern Florida is within that cone of uncertainty as we get towards Sunday morning. Very, very dangerous storm out there right now. Those winds unfathomable. What prompted the upgrade to a Category 5? Well, Hurricane Hunter aircraft have been flying in and out of this storm pretty much constantly within the past 24 hours. They're passing each other on the runways as they're coming in from one mission and taking off for the next. Well, this morning they did a run through and found uh, peak winds or sustained wind speeds of around 186 miles per hour. Big jump from the last time they were out there. This was found in the northeastern quadrant, and that prompted uh, the upgrade there. So that one, I want to tell you about the hurricane quadrants. Which ones are the worst? You cut it into four slices, quadrants, and you look at the northeastern side. is always going to be the strongest. Why? You have to factor in the storm momentum or the storm direction. So it's moving off to the north here. So you have to take into account the storm movement speed and add in the wind speed. So you're always going to get those higher wind gusts there in the front right or the northeast quadrant. On the other side of that, the front left, still significant storm surge there. And you go off to the back right, significant wind speed still found within that. The back left, if you're talking in terms of weakest when you're dealing with a hurricane, you're going to find the back left as finding the weakest winds there. So we're going to have to watch that very, very closely as we go through the next few days here and see where that northeastern quadrant influences some land masses. Now, I also want to dispel some rumors that maybe you've heard on social media. I know I've been asked a few times, Tim, when is Irma going to grow and become a Category 6? News to me, there's no such thing as a Category 6. The Saffir Simpson scale, which is what we use to gauge hurricane strength based on its wind speed as well as its minimal central pressure, only goes up to a Category 5. And that includes any storm that has sustained winds of 157 miles per hour or stronger, which is where Irma currently sits. It cannot grow in categorical size from there. This is the strongest of all hurricanes. The category is the most destructive 
and will flatten many buildings and completely flood the first or lower floors due to the storm surge with the increased wind speeds constantly. And then you got those higher gusts as well. Here's how it looks on infrared satellite imagery. This allows us to view the storm even at night when the sun is not lighting up the clouds to be picked up by visible satellite imagery. But then I want to flip it around and show you how it looks on our visible satellite imagery. I mean, this is a almost perfectly symmetrical storm here with a very defined eye. In fact, we get a close up view that eye itself nearly 30 miles wide. In fact, if you look closely, you can see the ocean surface. Typically, when you get a very well-defined eye on a very mature, very sound structured storm, you see the ocean surface or the land surface right through. Very calm conditions within the eye. And there is a reason for that. The very strong winds that surround the eye, the eye wall, are stopped from coming into the center of the storm by a very simple process that you may have heard of the Coriolis force. It's driven by the rotation of the earth and that deflects all those winds off to the right. So they all rotate around the center here with the gustiest winds just outside where those clear conditions are. Also, the skies are clear because air that is forced into the center there warms and sinks and in turn the skies clear out clouds dissipate. As you can see, this is the calm before the storm. As you mentioned, states of emergency, not only in Florida, but also here in Puerto Rico, where we were upgraded to hurricane warning just overnight. And that means today is all about preparation. The people who we've spoken to here on the ground have said, look, we're Caribbean people. We understand what it's like to have wind and rain, especially at this time of the year. But a category four hurricane, that's a completely different beast. That's why the National Guard has already been activated. Schools are closed. More than 200 FEMA workers are already on the ground and almost 500 emergency centers have been set up all throughout the island. Meanwhile, back in Florida, people are gearing up. We're having food and supplies and water. They're stocking up because authorities there say they can't afford not to be prepared for Hurricane Irma. All 67 counties there are under a state of emergency, and some people are taking a wait-and-see approach, deciding whether or not they're going to evacuate based on how close this hurricane comes. Meanwhile, many there are preparing for an event that's already been described as catastrophic and as life-threatening, and one that's barreling toward us. Americans are looking ahead to another potential disaster. Hurricane Irma was just upgraded to a Category 5 storm. It now packs maximum sustained winds of 175, declared a state of emergency ahead of a potential impact. The storm could strike islands in the eastern Caribbean tonight before heading toward Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Forecasters say Irma could turn north this weekend, heading for Florida or the Carolinas. Manuel Bohorcas is in Miami with the latest there. Manuel, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm standing in the Brickell neighborhood near downtown Miami. And during a storm last month, this area flooded after heavy rains. In fact, this is what it looked like here on August 1st. As Hurricane Irma may have its sights set on the U.S., people in Florida are preparing for the worst. People in South Florida are emptying store shelves, filling grocery carts, and packing their cars with water. It's not good for you. It's not good for distress. You have to do it early, as early as you can. Monday, hurricane hunters flew through the storm for the first time as it gained strength in the Atlantic. We'll know more as the week progresses what kind of a threat it really poses to, uh, to Miami-Dade County. Carlos Jimenez, the mayor of flood-prone Miami-Dade County, is watching Hurricane Irma closely. Well, the storm surge is uh, really the thing that, that kills the most people, so that's what really we're worried about. Storm surge is when the sea level rises during intense storms, pushing water ashore, leading to flooding. A recent study found Florida has 2.7 million properties at risk, the most in the U.S. Miami Beach averages around four feet above sea level and fights flooding at high tide on a regular basis. Last month, heavy rain turned the city streets into rivers. The anti-flood pumps failed during a power outage. The city has ordered portable backup generators, but Mayor Philip Levine warned the pumps may not be enough. These pumps were designed for normal rain and, of course, sea level rise. They will be helpful in the event of a storm, but they're not designed for hurricanes. 
Irma now at Category 5, but for some perspective, it's been more than 100 years since two Category 4 hurricanes have made landfall in the U.S. in the same year. And with Harvey fresh on everyone's minds, the concern here in Miami and throughout South Florida is that if Irma makes landfall, it could also be disastrous.